Welcome to another episode of Follow the Brand. I am your host, Grant McGaw, CEO of Five Star BDM, a five star personal branding and business development company. I want to take you on a journey that takes another deep dive into the world of personal branding and business development using compelling personal story, business conversations, and tips to improve your personal brand. By listening to the Follow the Brand podcast series, you will be able to differentiate yourself from the competition and allow you to build trust with prospective clients and employers. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Make it one that will set you apart, build trust, and reflect who you are. Developing your five-star personal brand is a great way to demonstrate your skills and knowledge. If you have any questions for me or my guests, please email me at grant.magaw, spelled M-C-G-A-U-G-H, at 5 star BDM, B for brand, D for development, M for masters.com. Now let's begin with our next five star episode on Follow the Brand. We believe that the Black Business Expo USA can raise laptops, computers, and scholarships each and every year for students in high school studying to attend college by an event that showcases business and corporations through community engagement, economic diversity, equity, and inclusion. Join me this week as the Follow the Brand podcast joins a showcase of Black business owners from around the world during the Black Business Olympics, a 12-hour, seven-day event broadcast internationally in 200 countries with over 1 million viewers annually. Dr. Eric A.W. Kelly III is an acclaimed business leader, entrepreneur, artist, author, poet, and community activist who lives in Durham, North Carolina. Born in Washington, D.C., Dr. Eric Kelly III is the CEO of the Black Business Expo USA for more than 40 years. The Black Business Expo USA is one of the largest business showcases in the history of Black America in North America. Dr. Kelly is also the founder of the Black Business Olympics, one of the largest virtual global business showcasing event for Black business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. Last year, the Black Business Virtual Olympics showcased 145 speakers to over 600,000 attendees during their quarterly Black Business Expo events. BBL's mission is to raise scholarships and laptops for high school students going to college. This year, the Black Business Olympics plans to empower businesses by doing six events, one every other month in January, March, May, July, September, and November. Kelly's purpose for the Black Business Expo is to raise scholarships for students graduating from high school to attend college. Kelly has awarded more than 25 deserving students laptop computers and scholarship funds for over 30 years. The event's success opened the door for him to become a widely respected host of local radio and television shows. Kelly has since produced such notable on-air shows as the James Stevens III Comedy Show, Business Worldwide, Games People Play, Young, Gifted, and Facts, and The Man on the Spot, as well as launched the North Carolina Central University Sports Network. Additionally, Kelly has used his media platforms to work with young people on how to be a part of the television and radio industry, providing training for students requiring communication skills to succeed in radio and TV. He has shared his knowledge with students on how to create radio and TV shows, along with providing scholarships for high school students, again, preferring or pursuing their college education. Dr. Kelly is the recipient of numerous awards and recognition to include Standard of Excellence Award for Corporate Trade Shows, Gold Award for Corporate Diversity and Inclusion, 
Southwestern Sales School Lifetime Master Salesman Award and the Raleigh Durham Minority Business and Development Center Award for Minority Advocate of the Year. Now, Kelly is also a journalist, career, and and artist, which includes such clients as Black Enterprise Magazine, The Million Man March, Delta Airlines, The Urban Journal, Black Business Magazine, and The Carolina Times. He is the author of the five DVDs and art books, Art Anthology, Human Landscapes, Barack Obama, The Face of Change, Michael Jackson, The Man in the Mirror, Amazing Lights, then Color Spots, Cyclone, and On a Hot Hot Day, his Master Salesman's Book and the eight steps to the road to the sale, which is a textbook used in the course he teaches at Durham Tech Community College. Dr. Eric Kelly III is a widely sought after speaker for conferences, corporate workshops, and school events to promote self-esteem, business strategies, art, and entrepreneurship. His dedication for community engagement and service is unwavering as he often mentors minority business owners on business strategies, business plan writing, sales winning methods, and other key elements vital for entrepreneurs. Kelly also contributes his time and energy volunteering to help local businesses and nonprofit organizations with their branding, advertising, public relations, marketing, and revenue generating initiatives. Let's welcome Dr. Eric Kelly III to the Follow the Brand podcast, where we are building a five-star brand that you can follow. Welcome, everyone, to another fabulous week on the Follow the Brand show. And today, as always, we're going to have a special guest, but we have a special mission. We have a mission today. We are going to not just talk about it. We are going to do something about it. And what I'm talking about is helping our youth from a perspective of of giving the tools that they're going to need to compete in this world. And I'm going to be participating in the Black Business Expo throughout the week from March 21st through the 27th. I've got our special guest on today. He's going to tell us a little bit more about himself, a little bit more about his story, why this is so important. And we want as many people as possible to tune in to the entire week. That's March 21st through the 27th, 8 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern. We're talking about already throughout the world, over a million viewers have tuned in to what Dr. Eric Kelly III has been doing for the community. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Kelly. Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's always great when I get a chance to come to follow your brand podcast. Man, this is an an exciting podcast. had an opportunity to see some of your work. And man, you do some outstanding work. And the thing that we really love from a a entrepreneurship uh, um, perspective is that you're consistent. And consistency when it comes to your brand is the most important. Many people can start the race but it's like the tortoise and the hare. You know, people didn't realize the hare was so far ahead. He just said, I'm going to take a nap. And when he woke up, the tortoise was going across the line. And that's what we have to look at when we look at uh, a phenomenal uh, people like yourself working in this space. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Dr. Kelly. And, and, and these are the Olympics. The funny that you bring up the tortoise and the hare. And I don't you know, plan on coming in last. You know, in, in these Olympics, because there is a little context that goes on, you're going to see that this event from the 21st through the 27th, you're going to have phenomenal speakers. And each speaker has an opportunity to get a prize, whether it's a, a bronze or a silver or gold. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about you because you're a phenomenal person yourself. You have been doing, you know, branding, marketing, advertising, but you're actually an artist. And I find that so fascinating. And then you've started even some foundations, museums. So t- tell me about your history around being an artist. Well, you know, it all started back uh, when I was seven years old. Well, I should say when I was five years old. 
when I was five, my great grandfather and I used to, used to go to the courtrooms. You know, he would walk to the to the um, nursery school and pick me up, and we would walk back to the courtrooms, and we would sit in the courtroom, and and it was his thing. You know, he would watch everything's going on in the courtroom. So you know, I'm a kid. You know, I I don't care. I don't know. I'm just with with, with Papa. So we're in there watching, watching and watching. So about when I got to be about six and a half, maybe coming towards seven, he walked into my bedroom and he said, he said, you know, every black family needs a lawyer. And so I'm sitting there, you know, I'm just listening. And then he, then he says, I want you to be a lawyer. That's what I want you to be. I want you to be a lawyer. And so I'm looking at him like, okay, well, you know, what is a lawyer? You know, that's what my mind is saying. And then he 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 grabbed these big books and he put them on my bed. He said, these are the kinds of books that you're going to have to read. And now I'm terrified. I'm like, what? What are you? You're serious. I'm not serious. And so my grandmother was telling me as I was growing up that I could be anything I wanted to be. So about four years old, um, I was in church and and I was one of those kids, you know, the one of the kids that running everywhere, that's getting into trouble, that's doing this, is that's messing with everybody. And everybody loves the kid because he's a kid. Now, if I was a grown person doing it, somebody would have said, sit your butt down. But, you know, and so I'm having a great time. And my grandmother snatches snatches me up from what behind one of the one of the uh, benches and, and, and pulls me around and hands me a piece of paper and a pencil and an ink pen. And I don't know what it was. I don't have a clue where it came from, but I'm looking in the choir and watching what's going on in the choir and I start to draw. And my grandmother told me when I was in, in um, junior high school, uh, this story, cause I, I didn't remember She said, and the people that you were drawing, he said, the stuff that you was drawing looked like the people in the choir. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I said, I wish you would have kept that piece of paper because that would be, you know, I would love to see it. And so my grandfather was pushing me to become a lawyer. And I told my grandfather, I said, well, you know, I don't want to be a, a, a lawyer. I want to be an artist. OK. And he looked at me. He walked out the room. I thought I was good. I thought, you know, you got kids. I thought I was good. Then about a month later, he came back to my room and he said, what are you going to do? Are you going to be a lawyer? Or are you going to be an artist? And I was kind of thinking, I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to be an artist. It'll be all over with. So I said, I'm going to be an artist. He said, okay, if you're going to be an art artist, I got this big hall in, in the house, and we're going to start you a museum. Okay. Now, I don't have a clue what a museum is. Okay. My great-grandfather set me down, and he started telling me things like, well, if you're going to be an artist, people are going to take advantage of you and want to get your work for free. And they're going to tell you how good it is, but at the end of the day, they're going to want to get your work for free. And then he said, he said, you got to learn to sell your work to collectors only and don't just give it away. And so what has happened over my lifetime, I have work from my elementary, not my elementary school, my junior high school all the way to now. Okay. If somebody gets a piece of my work, they got to buy it. My great grandfather used to say, if you don't value your value, then your value would not be valuable. And he would always say, you need to put on your artwork what you think is worth. And so the older I got, the more I started looking at what museums are, um, who artists were. And then one day I'm looking at good times and I'm watching J.J. Walker draw. And so, you know, me, like everybody else, we're fascinated with him drawing. So in my mind, I said, okay, I can, I can get there. I can be this. I can be an artist. Because the show was around him being an artist and, you know, all the things he was going through. And then I find out that he's not the artist. And I find out that the artist is a guy by the name of Ernie Barnes. Okay. Ernie Barnes is from Durham, North Carolina, went to Hillside High School, where I went to high school. And so I did started doing research on who this Ernie Barnes was. So I asked my stepfather who Ernie Barnes was. 
Well, my stepfather was in school with Ernie Barnes. <laughs> so now I'm getting this, okay, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. And then I realized what styles were, what themes were, what, what art really was. And, and I said to myself, well, because I come from a family of originals. You know, I don't come from a family of we copying what you're doing. We all, my, I don't do the story of how I um, came up from poverty, how I came up from a, a broken home, how I came up from abuse, how I came up from homelessness. I come from a family of saying you can do anything you want to do. You know, the number one thing in the world today, my great grandfather used to say is thinking. He said, number two is sales. And he said, number three is listening. And, and my grandmother used to say, follow your voice. Don't follow other people's voice. So when I started seeing Ernie Barnes work, I said in, my, in the back of my mind, I don't want to be an Ernie Barnes. But being in Durham and drawing, every time you drew something, it led people to say that you're going to be like Ernie Barnes. And so had that stigma for years that I would be like an Ernie Barnes. And when I got to college, I went to um, uh, David Driscoll's 200 Years of African-American Art um, 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 Tour. And I walked into this room and on this wall was a giant mural. And the mural looked like I drew it. Because if you understand art, we all have what we call fingerprints, yeah. you know, so we all we're going to draw we're going to draw our fingerprints. And that's one of the things a lot of people don't know. And there was a gentleman by the name of Charles White and Charles White was out of Cleveland, Ohio, who had moved to Los Angeles to to uh, teach. And so when I saw the work, my teacher said, Eric, that looks like your work. I said, sure does. I said, well, whose work is it? Found out it was Charles White. And so I started doing extensive research on Charles White to find out who he was, what kind of work he did, the whole nine. Now, the, the key to the reason I'm bringing this up to people so they would know that you can get wherever you want to go if you do the research. Many times we don't do the research. And when we talk about the Black Business Olympics, you'll find out that I've done extensive research to get it to where it is because, you know, it's, it's, it's not a daunting task. It's just an amazing task that I just enjoy doing. And so while I was, while I was in, in high school, three teachers pulled me aside. And those three teachers, my history teacher, my English teacher, and my art teacher. Sandra Dowd, and I will never forget Sandra Dowd because Sandra Dowd was this little lady who said to me that what I do is I play around in class and then it's time for the project. I walk into class. I'm the quietest person in the class because there's a deadline to get the project done and I'm going to get the project done on time because I got to make an A in art because it's my thing. And she said to me, you're actually cheating the world. So they pulled me into the teacher's lounge and they told me I had to draw for them. And the way that they got me to draw for them was my English teacher said, you know, you can't graduate without, without passing English. My history teacher said, you know, you can't pass, um, you can't graduate without passing history. And so they had me kind of locked in. But what most people don't know about me is I'm a competitor. I like to win. No matter what happens, my great grandfather put it in me. We win. We don't accept losses. If we lose, it's because of lack of effort. You always win if you put in the effort. You may not get to your goals. You may not earn as much as money as you want. But if you put in the eff effort, you will win. And so every morning, every, every morning, I would bring art to each one of these teachers. At the end of the year, when the Durham Lynx came, which was given the art trophy out to students in the state of North Carolina. They had just given the art trophy to a guy by the name of Ricky Cooper. And so, you know, I saw Rick, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to throw no shade, but I saw Ricky Cooper's work and I said, it's all right in my mind. But the, the challenge that I had in those days is, is I didn't believe in competition when it came to art. 
I believe that art is everybody's opinion. You know, you may like my work. Somebody else may not like my work. Somebody else may like may like my work. So I come from a background of I'm not pushing things in your face. I'm just doing what I do. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, great. Because it's an opinionated situation. I learned that by watching Ernie Barnes and watching Charles White go into arguments about themes. They were saying that each one of them was stealing each other's themes to draw, draw pictures. Now, I didn't know what that meant at the time, but as I got older, I was able to see what they mean about themes. And so once I, once I won this trophy for the state of North Carolina, I started getting letters and I got letters to, for an art scholarship. And I, I'm a research guy, so I wanted to be a black artist. So I was doing my research and found out that North Carolina Central University had some of the top black artists in the world right here in my hometown. So I took my portfolio and my letters over to the university the university and asked them, I said, you know, I got these letters. My SAT is out the, off the chain. Can I get a scholarship here? Uh, Lana Henderson said, we don't have a scholarship here, but we'll look at your stuff. I left it with them. Within a week, they sent me a letter and said that I could come to North Carolina Central on art scholarship. And that's where it all began. And so going on art scholarship, and I know I'm probably a little long-winded because you you kind of threw me in on what I love instead of on no, what no. I love. You know what? This is a personal brand show. We need to know your story because that type of passion is what's driving your Black Business Olympics. So yeah. I, 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 I'm very conscious of that. And I want you to tell your story. So I'm listening. And so, and, and, and I appreciate you for asking because many times, Artists don't have the personality that I have. Artists don't have the 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 overtly um, confidence that I have. Many, I mean, artists are like humans. Many humans don't have the confidence. They don't have the you know. It's just different different flavors. What happened to me was this: once I got into college, I walked in and I sat down with my counselor. My counselor said, well, you know, artists, most artists are going to be starving artists. And I was going to be an art teacher. And so he said, well, you're probably going to make $30,000 or $40,000. And you have three months off, off in the year to work to, to get another job. And I, when I heard that, I was like, no, that's not what we're doing. We're not getting another job. That's not happening. Whatever I'm going to do, it's going to pay for everything I want to do. Super Bowls, NBA playoffs, concerts, women, cars, houses, whatever I'm doing, that's what it's going to do. That's why you come to college to learn how to put yourself in a position so that you can do other things. And so then he said, I could be a fine arts major. And, and now, mind you, I'm 65. So in those days, when you say something like a fine arts major who's going to be designing cars and those kinds of things, you're thinking that maybe you're not going to get that job, right? Because we're talking about the we're talking about the seventies, and so then he said you can go into advertising and write your ticket. When he said that, I said okay, that's what I'm going to do. So I changed my major from art education to visual communications. Okay, now. Just because I changed my major to advertising had nothing to do with me as an artist, of changing my mind from being an artist. So I still was committed to drawing and painting because I had a museum created for me at seven years old at, in my great grandfather's house. So the drawing part and the museum part had to continue. We couldn't stop that just because we're going to be doing visual communications and, and, we, and, and, and we're not going to be a school teacher because that was all a part of the plan. It, it was, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a... Oh, no, I get you. That, that happens a lot with different people, especially visionaries like yourself. You know, you're going to have some twists and turns, but it doesn't get you off of your home plate, which is I am an artist. I'm doing you know, visual communication, because that's that's just a sidebar of who I am, because I can do that, too. But in the heart and mind, I'm an I read your on your LinkedIn profile. It says in your about page and all it talks about is you as an artist. 
So I, I hear what you're saying. And so once I made the decision to do visual communications, I still, because I was on art scholarship there, I treated college like it was high school. I had classes from eight in the morning to five in the afternoon. Between each one of my classes, I had a library, okay? And so what I would do during the week is I would go to classes and I would study after class. So that means I spent two hours on any, on any subject matter. And I was, and I'm not saying I'm a smart, smart guy, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at regurgitating information. So that's what education is, regurgitating information. And so after five o'clock, I was hanging out with everybody. Many of my friends were, were, you know, when you see the Dean's list and I had a 3.6, 3.8, many of my friends would say, man, I saw the Dean's list. How you get on the Dean's list? You was at the party. How'd you get on the Dean list? You was over there. How did you get? I ain't never seen you go into class because most of the time in college, when you see your friends is when after five o'clock, you don't see them during the daytime unless they're in class with you. And so by, by understanding what my great grandfather used to say is what is your life structure? How do you set up the time that you spend your time? Is your time just frivolous time to just run, running around doing what it wants to do? Or is your time, put in a box that you can follow so that you can do the things that you want to do. You know, I know you wanted to know a little bit about me, but I definitely want people to understand. No, this is a good historical information background about who you are as an individual. I always talk about you have to own your personal story and you do that. You have to own, you have to own your business story. Mm -hmm. And then you got to understand those, those things that happen beyond your control that um, yeah, if your grandmother wasn't in your ear, you, that, it, this would have never happened. This episode is brought to you by Five Star BDM. Five Star BDM is a professional consulting and advisory group keenly focused on business development services for small to mid-sized businesses and entrepreneurs. Although every business is unique, they often share challenges that can be addressed through smart branding. Services include process improvement and operations, digital strategy and transformation, business intelligence, digital marketing, and personal branding. Our five-star business and personal branding company has helped a number of professionals and organizations to optimize and grow. The result is more business, more opportunities, better reach, positive outcomes. Please visit www.5starbdm.com to learn more and view all the episodes of Follow the Brand. I, and I got to tell you something else. This is the real part of this whole story. And I don't want and I don't want to gloss over this. I don't want to let this slide out the back door. I don't want anyone who's listening, any of your audience, everything that I said to them before is what I call all right information. What I'm getting ready to say right now is the most important thing that I've said on your telecast. My grandmother said that she wanted to do the Black Business Expo to raise scholarships for kids, to send them to school, because she saw how me getting a scholarship changed the personality and the person I was by going to college. All that other stuff I done gone through or everything, sales, all that stuff. The bottom line was, she said that she saw the change in me and she wanted to see that change in kids all over the world. And that's why we do the Black Business Expo. That's why the Black Business Expo is the sponsor of the Black Business Olympics. Mind you, when the pandemic hit, and I said in a board meeting with my moms, we they told us we couldn't have the Black Business Expo because of the pandemic. And the governor said about 10 people could congregate. Okay? Yep. So I'm sitting there, I said, well, you know what we ought to do? We ought nothing to do like everybody else is doing. Everybody's doing weekend events, okay? They're doing just weekend events. 
What we ought to do is seven days, set it up like a business plan, have each day to be a theme day because everybody at home already, they, this is my brain saying, they ain't doing nothing. <laughs> I mean, think about what- no, this, let, Let's this, tune in. No, your, your format is great. And I'm glad we're at that point because the format that you have is fantastic. Every day is a focus. Every day is a focus, and it's from 8 to 8, and I'm sure they're all recorded, so you'll get an opportunity to tune in and understand in your walk of life what's important for you. I mean, I've been in sales 20, 25 years. Listening to you talk about your journey is is good knowledge and, and validation for me, and I really, truly appreciate that. I didn't even get a chance, and we will talk about this because you're an artist. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We, yeah. I, and you see how I'm backing up, right? You see how I'm backing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm an artist, but but and I love it. You know, we are conditioned. Okay, when we go to high school and junior high school, to focus on eight subject matters. Okay, the reason that high schools and schools were made was because during the Industrial Revolution, they had to figure a way to convince people to sit down in factories. That's what a school is. A school is about job, eight hours, and getting people to sit down and and go to a job and sit down. That's what people don't think about it like that, but that's what school is about. Okay, but we were able to focus on eight different things when we were in school. When we get out of school, we're taught that all we can have is one thing to focus on and make that good. But the billionaires and the millionaires have what is known as multiple streams of income. You can't have multiple streams of income if you focus on one thing. You have to focus on multiple. Okay. So when I started talking about the theme days, the Monday is business empowerment. Okay, and inspiration. When you open a business, what is the first thing you need? Empowerment, inspiration, information. Okay, on Tuesday, we do marketing, advertising, pub relations, merchandising, and branding. Remember, the sh- each day is 12 hours. Okay, now on Wednesday, we do 64 ways to do social media, all aspects of s- social media. And we really need to do a show and just talk about the speakers on each one of these days because every speaker is phenomenal. I mean, we got TED Talkers. We got um, um, people who have written books, bestsellers. We got millionaires. We got, oh, my God. Anyway, let me get back to these days. I'm excited about it because when I started this, all my friends and everybody told me it wouldn't work. But let me get to the days. So on Thursday, we do diversity and inclusion. But I added something else to that, which is equity. Okay. One, if you're not included, there's no diversity. But even if you include us in diversity and there's no equity involved, nobody makes money. And so then on Friday, we do Generation X versus Generation Z, how we bridge the digital divide. And then on Saturday, we do Black Business and and, and the culture, and Sunday we do black business and the church. These seven days helps you as a business owner to look at your business and listen to people in, the, in those fields talk to you on an expert level. And the most important part is this, Grant. The show is for the kids. That's right. We do it so our kids are not pushed to just be basketball players, football players, athletes, entertainers, rump shakers, and criminals. That's the negative the negative thing that's pushed, the narrative that's pushed to our kids each and every day. And so what we're doing is we're dispelling the biggest myth on the planet, and that's Black people cannot work together. There we go. We're doing seven days a week. 145 speakers and 
Our first one, we had 36,000 people to come. Our second, we had 48,000 people to come. We had 150,000 people to come to the next one. We had 250,000 people to come to the next one. We've had 600,000 people to come to the next one. And in January, our year to date number is what? 1,380,000 people to come to this network because we are building capacity and we are, we are, we are shooting our information to over 200 countries because our speakers come from everywhere in the world. We, we are using something that's put here for us that people are not thinking about. And some people say, well, Eric, how did you figure that out? I didn't. Like I said before, I'm laughing and joking in a meeting and my mama said, you do it. All of my friends said to me, it wouldn't work. People are Zoomed out. People are not going to sit there for 12 hours. People are not going to sit there all week. My best friend, one of my best friends has a network, BT, a BGN Television Network. And he was in my ear. Man, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. You need to record it. You could have some problems. Anything could happen. Technical issues, this and that. And I, I had to hang the phone up and not pick up his phone call for two months because he was wearing me out with it won't going to work. Mind you, I am the guy that's saying to everybody, how are you guys telling me it's not going to work and it's never been tried? Okay, is that not what they told Bill Gates? Oh, yeah. Is that not what they told Bessos? Is that not what they told Steve Jobs? They told all these guys it's not going to work. Nobody well, I think gonna... anything that's new, anything that's innovative, anything that's different, it's going to be challenged. But if you are fired up with the vision, going back to what your grandmother said, the mm -hmm. vision, that's going to push you. You have a vision. You have a purpose. And now you just, I need a vehicle. This is your vehicle. This is how we're going to get this done. And the other piece about that grant is this. So... I wanted to just do 10 o'clock to four o'clock, okay? Remember, I said, you got to think big. So while I'm calling people and talking to people, and folks are, well, how are you getting all these speakers? I got on LinkedIn and got, I got you from LinkedIn. That's correct. I mean, and I'm, I'm just being real. I went on LinkedIn and asked people to be on, to tell their amazing stories. And people say, yeah, I'll tell my story. Well, what kind of time can you tell my, your story? I can tell my story at nine o'clock in the morning. I can tell it at eight. I can tell. And so people started giving me different dates. And what I did was I just wrote the dates down. I didn't even pay attention that it was eight o'clock to eight o'clock at night. And before I knew it, I had by myself. And I'm not saying that to, to brag. I'm just talking about what happened. Because all my friends, everybody I knew said it wouldn't work. I couldn't get no help from nobody because everybody thought I was crazy. By myself, I had filled up seven days, 145 speakers. And now the daunting task was what? Now how I'm going to broadcast it. Yep. Mind you, I had been trying to figure that out all the while I'm doing this. Remember my great-grandfather said, put the vision first, the money will come. Correct. Okay. So I got the vision, but I still don't know because Zoom told me that, that if I'm going to have over 2,000 people on the Zoom, it's going to cost me $30,000. Cisco told me if I'm going to have over 5,000 people on the Zoom, it's going to cost me $40,000. And team told me, well, you know, that's a lot of people to have on at one time, but it's going to cost you blah, blah, blah. And you're going to need this, 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 and this. So instead of me saying, oh, woe is me, it ain't going to work. I kept looking. I kept searching. And a friend of mine was working with the IBM network. A lady friend of mine, she was doing a talent show. And, and she wanted to do a talent show online. And I told her about him. Yeah. Okay. Now we have young people in, in our, on our board. And one of the young people said to me, look, um, Dr. Kelly, what you can do is you can do it on Facebook Live and it'll be free. And so <laughs> I heard him, but it didn't hurt him. Because sometimes when kids start, young people start talking, we don't hear them. Remember, <laughs> We are listening to what we're thinking, so we're not hearing them. So I kind of heard him, but didn't hear him. So when Mark did the show, it was a disaster. They couldn't get nothing right because a lot of singing in different places. And so 
She called and complained to me about it. I called Mark and asked him what happened. And then, yeah, I called Mark and asked him what happened. And Mark told me, well, man, really what I do is interview shows. I really don't do all this singing stuff. And he said he did interview shows. My brain said, well, tell me exactly what you do, Mark. Mark yeah. breaks down everything. He says, and, and we do the interview shows on the network. We're sending out the Facebook. We're sending out the LinkedIn. We're sending out the YouTube. And we're sending out the other social media outlets. And we have a schedule. We, and when I schedule them, in, and my brain is saying, Expo. I mean, uh, Olympics, Olympics, Olympics. He's still talking, Olympics, Olympics. Then I said, well, I just got one question, man. How much would it cost? If I wanted to do seven days a week, 12 hours. And he said X amount of dollars, which was right in my wheelhouse because I was at 30,000. So any number less than 30,000, I'm I'm all in. And so with that, when that happened, now I got a platform. Okay, the platform is going to 200 countries already. Okay, the platform is a stable platform that people are doing business on already. Now you're going to allow me to pay you to take over a week. And that's how the Black Business Expo got to its massive amount of audience. Now, live, okay, I want to point this out to people. You know, sometimes when you're listening to yourself and you're not listening to other people, you make many mistakes. I'm the guy who listens to everybody. So I am watching the internet. Remember, we're all at home. We're all chilling. There's nobody where to go. You, you can't go outside because people died in four days. So you, you don't want to go outside. Pandemic is real. This is when the pandemic was real, real. It's still real, real, but they're working on it. This before they ever had a vaccine or start taking shots. And so I am watching these two young men by the name of Swiss Beats and Timberland. And Swiss Beats and Timberland are doing something called Versus. And Versus is a live concert online where everybody's coming to the live concert because guess where everybody at? They at home and can't go nowhere. So I watched the first Versus. I said, man, this is good. I watched the second verses. I said, this is good. I watched the third verses and my brain cell said, why are you watching? You're not a spectator. What's going on here? And I'm thinking about the Olympics. I said, wait a minute. If we do live and we tell each one of the speakers to bring their audience to the live event, I can generate the numbers. 145 pe- 45 speakers, an average of 2,000 people is how many people that can come to the, to the event. Oh, oh, the, the numbers are as the, the numbers you've already stated. You, you, you're, you, you're blowing out the mil- and then to get advertisement, you say, like, well, what kind of audience are you talking about? Well, you know, per, per, per show, you got 100 to, you know, 130, 140, each, 150. Look, look, each show, the average person is going to have about 2,500 people looking at them. Okay. But the real part is this. After the live, after the first 12 hours, we flip those 12 hours so you get seen twice in countries across the globe. Wow. Okay. Truly an international you know, you, you're coming from your, your from that small event, somewhat small. I mean, was it that small in Durham? To now, you are an international player on the stage with on the, the black, sta- oh, oh, black oh, oh. business Olympics. I mean, that is the Olympics. And, and now check it out. Now I'm not done. So we play the information. Thirty days, like right now, the people that spoke in January are advertising the one in. March. So there have been, if you go to my Facebook right now, to Black Business Expo USA Facebook, if you go to um, Eric A.W. Kelly right now, the expo is going on right now. The numbers are people, are, two and 3,000 people are, are watching it right now. Okay. When March comes, we start with a whole nother group of folk 
and they get the 24 hour deal and they advertise to the next one in May. Okay. Now hold on. Hold on. Okay. Thank you very much. Hold on. Hold on. The key for us is to be consistent. Everybody's saying to me, remember my grandmother said, why are you charging folks? Do, you know, all everybody in, but get but be consistent Ooh, first. Control the audience, right? Control the audience. So now we've been consistent for seven shows. So now it's time to start talking to companies and corporations about what we've done because we've already hit over a million and we and we consistent. And mind you, our goal is 365 days a year, 24-hour black network of business owners all over the globe. You're probably saying, Eric, 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 wait a minute now. How are you going to get there? Let me tell you, as, as some of the people say, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so how are we going to get there is this, okay? We did one in 20. In, in um, 21, last year, we did four, okay? This year, we're doing every other month. That's six. Next year, we're going to do every month, okay? The following year, we're going to do every two weeks. The next year, we're going to do every three weeks. And the following year, if we don't get it done by the fourth year, by the sixth year, we may get there before the sixth year. But check this out, Grant. Every third month in the month, we do a show, right? That's this this year. That's six this year. The other alternate months, we're going to do what? Uh, uh, every other month, the, instead of doing January, we're going to do February. And the alternate months, we're going to do the third week, right? Right, right. Okay. You heard the song, roll, roll, roll your boat yeah. down the that, street. That's continuation. Continue continuation, and we have different speakers doing different times, locking into weeks. In other words, when we recruit somebody to speak on our platform, we come to them and we say, "Look, would you like to have your own television show for six months? And you're going to speak one time at the same time every month for six months." Wow. Most people say, "Yeah, cool, great, yeah, okay, what it is." That's all they got to deal with is one time. One to many. One to many. Once a month. Once a month. Six months, right? So we're breaking them down to six months, six months, six months, six months, six months, six months. And the next thing you know, because you're sitting there just like everybody was sitting there telling me it won't work because they're thinking I got to deal with 145 people at one time when in reality, all I got to deal with is one person at one time. There you go. Make it simple. One, per one person at one time. Right. Okay. So when you put a team of 30 or 40 or 100 people together, which is what this is, the 365 is going to take about 100 people. Yeah. Okay. So before it can take 100 people, it's got to be proven. It's got to be consistent. It's got to look good. It's got to smell good. It's got to walk, talk, and look like a CNN. And for those who have not seen what we do, that is exactly what it looks like. It looks like a black network coming on, giving you information about your business, about your growth by raising scholarships for students. That's what it looks like, man. Now that, that's a one envision. That's what it will, and that that's beautiful. I am so glad to be a part of this. You've invited me to speak three times uh, during this week in, in, in March uh, about what I like to talk about, which is personal branding, and we're going to be talking about this next wave of technology in the metaverse. And we will, and I want to hopefully we get a chance to even bring you on to talk about these NFTs because that's art. How are you going to get oh, paid on hey, art? Well, you know we've gone long. I'm, I'm going to. Grant, you know we go long. Oh no, no, we that's and, another and, discussion. And, that's yeah, another discussion. 
I'm looking forward to the next time we get a chance to talk because today we signed a deal with a metaverse that we're going to be simultaneously doing the metaverse while we are doing the universe. I keep saying to people, if everybody's in the metaverse, who's in the, who's, who's controlling the universe? <laughs> so with that being said, uh, Grant, you know, we, we talked earlier. I got to get out of here for those who would like to know yep. about us. Black Business Expo USA. The number to call is 919-308-9090. You know, I want to thank you for allowing me to come on the show, but I'm not going to disclose why I got to run out. You oh, know, no. we already know. No, thank you, Eric. Everything you've did is golden knowledge. Golden knowledge. Thank you for you and your family for continuing to believe in the Black Business Expo, the Olympic, to believe in our children, getting an opportunity through scholarships. If anyone to, wants to or needs to, Tune in to all the episodes on Follow the Brand at www.5starbdm. And that is B for Brand, B for Development, and for Masters.com. Until next week, I'll talk to you later, Eric. Bye-bye. Thank you so very much. Bye-bye.